Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and it's time for my July 2023 garden tour brought to you by Vessi Seeds. It's uh, been a really weird, uh, June was a very strange month and we had an incredible amount of rain, which is good, but there wasn't a lot of sun, but still garden's coming along just fine. We've had lots of heat. It's just been a really weird growing condition, sort of non-typical, I guess, to put it that way. Um, and it's been very good for weeds. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, the garden is not in a state of perfection, but I thought I'd just show you things as is, in process sort of thing, because that's just the way we try to do it here, real gardening, you know, nothing's ever perfect. If the garden looks perfect, you're probably not seeing everything. <laughs> so I like to show everything being perfect, because people love to see that, but it's also good to see something sort of like in progress, right? So uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look around the garden. Okay, outside the garden. We got the, uh, this whole bed is just potatoes, okay? And they're coming in good. Not the sunniest spot in the garden, but uh, I mean, it's all coming in just fine, right? And a month ago, there was hardly anything here to see. Now there's a lot to see. Uh, over here, we got uh, kind of Asian green, like a pak choy or a bok choy. Same thing there. These ones, I, I wish I'd made note of which one I planted where, because this one is really, I think that's pak choy. But holy smokes, look at the difference, right? It's not like one bed gets better sun or has better soil. This is just a better variety, whatever that is. I got some nice bloody dock growing over there. Uh, here's the bed where I had the peas and the potatoes growing. And uh, you can see the potatoes have come in nice. And the peas are about six feet high, doing great. And just about ready to start harvesting. These are what's called super sugar snap peas. So you want them to be a bit fat before you harvest them. They, they taste good like this, but the bigger they get, there's a point where they're too big, but almost like you want them the diameter of your, my, my pinky, which for a small person would be the diameter of a forefinger, <laughs> right? Anyway, tears and peas doing great. Uh, I got some lettuce here, which is kind of done. Now this was a This was a spinach garden, and that's done. Everything needs to be pulled, and something needs to, else needs to be planted there. Just a question of finding the time to do it. Got beets over there doing great. A little bit of weeding needed. Uh, garlic here, notice all the garlic. Just uh, a week ago, I pulled the scapes off all my garlic. Um, for whatever reason, this bed's doing the best. This bed has the biggest, best garlic. Um, so these will probably all be sea garlic for next year. But a lot of these stalks are an inch in diameter at the base, maybe even thicker. So you know you got good garlic there. Uh, this is the bed where I had uh, beans and spinach on each side. Most of the spinach is bolted. I'm still eating it. You have bolted spinach, you can eat it. You just gotta cook it. It's not, it doesn't taste great as a salad green, but you can use the whole plant. Like for a salad, normally you, you're just picking off little leaves like this. But as a cooked green, you cut it right off and use the stalks and everything. Um, so I use those in stir fries a lot. They're just great, right? I use the flowers and everything. So all this, that goes in the stir fry, right? All of it, all good. Anyway, the beans are really starting to climb up this trellis, which I just put up about four days ago. And already, <laughs> they're really going. Look look how high they are, three feet high, right? And, and a couple weeks ago, these, these plants were still <laughs> germinating sort of thing, so they're really coming on. Uh, over here, I got um, cucumber, parsley, and dill over here. Okay, and dill's a bit thin, I could use a bit more dill. But the cukes are coming in great, and I'm not messing around. Like last year, I kind of had a disaster with my uh, cucumbers. They did not come in well because I didn't mulch. At least that's what I think happened. So this year, I'm not done. You can see I'm putting a bit of grass down. Uh, we just just mowed the lawn. So we had like a period of rain where it rained for like three weeks and wouldn't stop, so we didn't mow the lawn. So now the lawn's so high that it has to be mowed with the bag on, which my son hates because he's doing all that. <laughs> uh, anyway, I got all these great grass clippings to use as a mulch and they're a great mulch for a garden so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna add some wood chips here but they're not enough to prevent weeds you need a lot you need three inches of wood chips to really do a good job of preventing weeds so you add some grass to that equation adds a whole bunch of nitrogen to the equation uh, everything grows great with glass grass clippings as a mulch and you only need it about two inches thick to smother weeds really well uh, so that's what's going to happen you can see i've filled in almost the whole thing just got to finish that off so that's coming in great. Really good cucumbers this year. I got some lettuce over here that's ready to bolt. So we're gonna be eating a lot of lettuce this week. Um, 
right here I got uh, carrots this was an unbelievably weedy mess uh, just 24 hours ago <laughs> and I've sorted all that out and put in a mulch and this should be should be maintenance free for the rest of the season you can see around the edge right against the rocks I planted some uh, cilantro and look that's getting ready to bolt as is all right so I think it's time to uh, make some uh, fajitas or something like that enjoy that uh, all my Amish paste tomatoes even this one I remember I did a video a while ago this one here looked dead I mean totally it looked destroyed and it has completely come back um, so that's great so these are all the same variety of tomato and they're they, excellent for canning excellent for sauces but also excellent for like tomato sandwiches and salads Amish paste tomato um, so I've only got one two three four five six seven eight nine I've only got ten ten plants but I mean and this is in a ten foot long ten foot by four foot bed but for me that's about the right spacing each of these has lots of room there's lots of air right lowering the risk of disease and that sort of thing I'm expecting great things and these are all tomatoes I just started in my window you saw me plant them back in April I think I uh, started them in the south facing window in my house and now they're all outside and doing great uh, I got parsnips here, nicely weeded, nicely thinned. Thin your parsnips to about two to three inches apart, and you'll get really nice parsnips. Nicely thinned and mulched. Uh, kale garden here is uh, a bit of a weedy mess. We got broccoli over here. Uh, so I have to deal with the weeds. That's all. So this needs about half an hour of TLC, uh, which I'll do some morning this week. You know, because it was raining and it was so miserable for most of J June, uh, the normal things, I mean, to maintain a garden, to me, all you need to do, even a garden the size of mine, right? Massive garden. Uh, I find if you spend 15 to 20 minutes in the garden in the morning, every other day, that's all you need. You just deal with whatever needs to be dealt with. A bed like this would have been easy to weed three weeks ago, but now it's going to take about half an hour. But that's still not that big a deal, right? Um, I, I know the reason I do it in the morning is because there's less uh, of the, you know, more aggressive flies. <laughs> um, I guess I didn't show the rhubarbs doing great. Massive rhubarb. And I thinned this out. I gave a lot of them away. I took whole plants out. Uh, still doing great. I mean, look at the size of this. Look at that leaf. Two feet wide, maybe more. Uh, remember the potatoes I started here in the rye, the rye garden? Look how good that's doing. Right? That's doing great. Uh, this was a carrot garden and I mulched it too early and the birds and stuff get in. You know, once you mulch a garden it makes uh, worms and stuff like that more available. So I mulched, I had little tiny carrots and I mulched it and the birds got in here kicking things around and messing things up and the, everything got mad, ruined. So now this is just a bed of weeds. So I, I have to pull everything out of here and plant something to make use of the space and it's only the beginning of july so there is enough time to put put potatoes here or beans or something like that or i can just thin out what my kale bed i'm gonna have a lot i'm gonna have way more kale than i need in that bed so i can thin that out and put some here i mean there's lots of options right but there's no point in waiting all right it's too late in my opinion to grow carrots now that we're into july so uh yeah, just uh, just deal with it. Move on. <laughs> I got enough carrots. It's all right. <laughs> a little bit more parsnips over here. A little bit of weeding needed, but that's working out okay. Lots of potatoes over here. Doing great. Uh, this uh, raspberry bed. I'm actually getting raspberries, but look, I've got this. Uh, I can't remember the name of this weed, but it's this vining weed. It, it comes in from the forest and travels underground. And I don't notice it until it's everywhere. But it is so bloody aggressive. Look at that, look at that. Its ability to strangle. See, it travels across the ground like that. It's so aggressive. Anyway, it's just one more thing to be uh, managed. Right, you just can't let it get, you can't let it establish a, a beachhead or it'll really, really choke out uh, your plants. But anyway, these raspberries, um, as you can see, 
right? I got some buds. And unlike other years, the rabbits have not come in here and made a catastrophe of the whole uh, enterprise. A little bit of weeding to do on the pathway here. This is a summer chore for my kids, dealing with path, with path weeds. Boy, the horse flies are really getting at me this morning, so sorry if the camera works a bit shaky. Um, yeah, look, here's some more of that. Look at that. Look at that. So aggressive. My God. Um, anyway, potatoes down here. Uh, over here, I thought I'd pulled out all the sun chokes I had here last year, but no, we still have some. I'm not worrying about it. I'm just going to let them go. And uh, when I harvest the potatoes, I'll harvest the sun chokes. Uh, I'm, dry, I'm growing sun chokes in other parts of the garden because I don't want them here because they cast shade. Um, but uh, I'm, you know, I'll just deal with them when I harvest the potatoes. If I keep growing potatoes here and pulling out every sun choke I can find. After a couple of years, they'll be eradicated. I know a lot of people say they act like an invasive weed, but they really don't. I've had them in lots of places in the garden. Right? I've had them all over the place in my garden. And uh, wherever I don't want them to be, I get them to stop being there. Uh, this bed here was a moved asparagus bed. And I really, really screwed up with this one. Um, so all the years I've been putting into growing asparagus, I think it's been a fail. Uh, to salvage this bed, I planted some beans. Uh, and they're still being attacked because there's so much mulch. I'm guessing that you know, mulch just, uh, it's got a bit of a heavy mulch and it's still not preventing these darn things from bulking up through, right? Uh, I got these things in the garden. They're a real problem, really aggressive weed. Um, anyway, I decided for this year just to plant beans in this bed if I can actually get them to grow. Because I've got this thing is, whatever this thing is, it's so, it's so aggressive. That it just strangles everything. And it just grows and creates a canopy and out competes. I mean, I, I've pulled a lot, but I had a row of beans growing here. And this whole thing was just covered in that weed. And because the weed's there, I think it makes it easier for slugs and things to attack um, the plants that you, uh, you know, attack your beans. Slugs love beans. Um, so, uh... So yeah, all those beans disappeared need to be replanted. But I'm thinking of seriously considering abandoning the notion of asparagus and just using this as a regular garden bed. I don't know. That's just where I am right now. Uh, as you can see, I got that weed attacking my uh, lingonberry garden. Anyway, lingonberries. Uh, still not a noticeable harvest. Although you're supposed to get some in the fall, so we'll see what happens. I mean, the bushes look good. They look healthy. And I got lots of foliage, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, I've had lots of strawberries this year, as you can see over here. These ones I'm almost all picked out. I got every two days we come and pick them. I've made about 12 jars of strawberry jam from my two strawberry beds. I, I forgot to show you the other one. I'll show you that in a minute. But yeah, you can see we got nice, nice juicy strawberries, but you really got to stay on top of them. You got to pick in every couple days. Uh, eggplant. Success with the eggplant. Uh, best eggplant garden I've had so far. And I mean, some of the plants really struggled a bit when I first stuck them in. And I had stuff like this happening, where you got the foliage sort of curling up. But then you see these little new, new little buds appearing down below. Right? That's what was the case with this. All... This was about yay high when I first planted it, and it died back, and now it's sending out this beautiful new growth, right? And I decided to put this little plastic wall around this bed just to keep the wind down and maybe make it a little bit warmer in this bed. Now I've got this green grass here, which I just put down this morning before filming, um, which will warm up the soil as well. And when you got a layer, a layer of green grass, it gets really warm as it decomposes. So we'll see how this goes, but I mean, this is the most promising eggplant uh, exercise I've ever had in my garden, ever. Best looking. Similarly, over here, peppers. Best looking peppers I've ever had. I had a bit of weeds here and I remulched it. 
when I was weeding, I there was one here and I just cut it right off. <laughs> I was weeding with a little hand hoe. Um, so I put something else there. I don't have any more peppers. And these are all the same variety, sweet Italian or sweet Italia. I don't want to have other varieties in here because I want to save the seeds because it's an heirloom or open pollinator. You can see I've already got one forming here. I mean, this is crazy. Uh, you know, peppers in early July in my backyard. What's going on? Now, I mean, I, I started these from seed indoors beginning of March. And they were flowering when I transplanted them. When I transplanted them, I picked off all the buds, everybody I could see on every plant. Because um, I thought, you know, plants need to be more focused on rooting and getting acclimatized. Uh, and for about the first two weeks, I had a plastic dome over these just to add heat. But now it's so hot and they're so well established, I don't think it matters. Um, so they're doing good. When they get a little bit higher, I think I might drive a stake in the ground and tie them onto a stake. Because last year, I mean, we can get extreme winds here in Nova Scotia. Uh, last year I had a couple nights where we had heavy winds and the plants just broke over and I lost a lot. I lost a lot of potential from the plants. So I think once they're a little bit higher, I'm going to put a little stick in the ground for each one of these just to fortify it a little bit from being blown over and broken by a heavy wind. The other uh, strawberry bed here, uh, lots of strawberries, lots coming out of this bed. This is maybe three years old or more. Okay, so this is a job for my kids. Every two days I just so go pick all the strawberries you can find. <laughs> and uh, we're just making jam because I would love strawberry freezer jam. Um, so that's what's going on with that. Squash bed here. You can see the squash at various stages. Some of them got eaten by slugs so I had to replant. So like this is one that was replanted. Just came up about a week ago. Right, here's one of the original ones that didn't get eaten by a slug. Okay. So that's all doing great. Uh, over here, the zucchini. I just moved this one this morning. I should probably put, hit that with some water. But uh, I moved, I had two right next to each other, so I moved one. But you can see I got lots of zucchini in this bed. We're gonna have a, an obscene amount of zucchini when this garden finally comes in. <laughs> I gotta remember to hit that with some water. Uh, over here we got uh, some beets. We're doing pretty good. A few weeds here, but not too bad. Little thinning needed with these beets. I'm not exactly sure why the why the greens are so purple. Uh, I'm sure that's something about the soil or whatever, but uh, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to let let nature take its course, and it'll probably be fine. <laughs> it's my experience anyway. Um, the pond is doing great. I know it looks uh, muddy. Oh, there was a goldfish. He just he just ran away because he heard me talking. I don't know why, but there's something along the edge here. There, if I'm if I'm quiet and I stand back and watch the pond, they're all nibbling at the edge of this moss. I don't know if there's something growing there or something moving or whatever, but um, anyway, if you saw this pond months ago, you wouldn't believe how much it's sort of just become this very natural looking thing, right? Um, all of this moss, which I brought in from the forest floor, you can see the new green, it's growing right um, so and I mean everything that's all moss I just stuck in the ground I used little pegs and pinned it in place uh, but it is all rooted and it's all just growing uh, the water is very muddy I've done videos on how to use uh, pelletized gypsum to decrease the cloudiness of the water um, but every time it rains Probably because the, the, you know, so I got a ditch there that feeds the pond and water comes down the hill through ditches. Every time it rains, this fills right up. And I think every time it rains, new muddy, the natural soil here is clay. So every time it rains, new clay gets washed into the pond and makes it cloudy again. So I don't really see a point in fighting. I don't think it's a battle that can be won for now. I think it's gonna take a number of seasons for everything to just work itself out in terms of you know the the pathway that the rain takes to bring water to this pond collects clay as it's running into the pond 
as that by pathway I mean that you know the, the ditch that feeds that right water comes in through there right and everything coming down the hill as more plant life gathers on the hill and as this just eventually gets washed out eventually there'll be less and less clay being washed into the pond and then they'll be worth uh, trying to control the the clay intake <laughs> For now, it's fine. The, the fish are totally fine. I mean, they're. I mean, you can't see them, <laughs> but believe me, they're fine. If I come out here with uh, some bread, put it somewhere, and just wait, um, there's plenty of fish. <laughs> there's about a dozen big goldfish in this pond, and um, since it's been started, uh, I've noticed there's at least at least three or four frogs that have moved in. One of them is quite large, almost the size of my hand. And I've seen those different frogs, they all have a unique coloration uh, all over the garden. So, I mean, this is wonderful. So I've got frogs in my garden that are using the pond as a home base. Um, so, you know, I win-win, right? And uh, this little, you can see the running water there in the corner, right? It's just, <coughs> I've done a video on this. I haven't, I just haven't edited it yet. But <laughs> I got a little solar thing here. It uh, powers a little pump that's in the water. And there's a tube that goes through all those bushes into the rocks here and sends water out here. So it, water is being circulated. And I mean, I'm sure some people will say, that's why you've got so many uh, flies in your garden. It's because of that damn pond. Um, but I mean, there's 12 goldfish, big goldfish in this pond and I don't feed them. So they're eating something. Right, so any fly larvae that's hatch in the pond is goldfish food. <laughs> that's what it is. And I'm sure some of them get it up, but this this is not the main cause of the flies in my garden. The fact that it's surrounded by a massive forest. Oh, and by the way, that there's just a ten football size, ten football, ten football field sized bog down there. Right, so that's why I've got a lot of flies in my garden. It's next to a forest, which is next to a bog. Um, so that's just the way it is, right? Over here, got some bed of onions doing pretty good. Tried growing pumpkin here, but it got eaten by something. Uh, same with here. I had had a pumpkin growing here, and then it just disappeared. And I replanted, and that germinated, and then that disappeared. So I don't know what the heck's going on with pumpkin this year. Uh, the only pumpkin I've got growing is this one. And this one doesn't even look that healthy. So this might not be a good year for a pumpkin. I just didn't have the space for it, I guess. I had, you know, it was a last minute afterthought planting pumpkins. I really, the idea was I'd have a couple growing along the edge here and I could train them this way. Um, but, you know, um, the this, the results are about equal to the effort, <laughs> you know, I just thought maybe I'd get lucky So I don't think I'm gonna have any pumpkins this year. That's okay. I don't, we don't need them anyway They're just for leaving on the porch <laughs> You know, I grow squash because they're good eating all these blueberries That I moved as you can see They're coming in really well the uh, the grapes that I moved Survived and you can see some grapes forming. I mean, I'm not gonna get much off the plant this year. The main thing is that I got the leaves, right? Because the leaves are important for pickling cucumbers. They keep your cu cucumbers crispy because they got a chemical and there's other ways to do it, but it's nice to just use everything from your garden. Put about three big leaves in with a batch of cucumbers and that'll keep them nice and crunchy. So yeah, you can see that the grapes survived. So in a couple of years, this whole big trellis will be filled up real good. Uh, this uh, apple tree that I got from Vessi's Seeds uh, that I planted in the spring is coming in nice. I put these sticks here so my kids wouldn't step on it. <laughs> right? Uh, this year, hascap berries. I'm getting lots of them. Right? That's a hascap berry. If you ever try to eat these, they're not particularly tasty in and of themselves. I mean, I guess that's all individual, but I find they're kind of tart. Um, but as a jam, holy smokes, these are just excellent jam. Really easy. It's a cooked jam, but easy to make. 
delicious, like just fantastic jam. I'm so glad I'm growing Hascat berries. I recommend, any, if you're a jam person and you like a variety of jams, um, I can't recommend Hascap enough. Really easy to grow. As you can see, it's a beautiful, healthy plant. You know, even if you're in a suburb and you just want to have a couple uh, bushes on your front lawn for just to have an ornamental bush, uh, why waste your time with rhododendrons when you can grow something like this and get these beautiful berries that taste so good as a jam? Uh, and a perfect gift to give for Christmas as well. So I got three of these. That's definitely enough. <laughs> you know, definitely enough for a lot of jam. For whatever reason, this bush is doing the best. Um, so I'd say almost 75 or 80 percent of the berries I've gotten this year were off this one bush. So when all three bushes are really going, it's going to be something else. Uh, this pear tree, since I moved it, remember I moved this last fall or last, yeah, last fall. It's looking very healthy and very happy. So pear tree is doing good. The apple tree that I was worried that I killed um, is doing great. I mean, there's no apples because the only other apple tree in the garden is that one. So there was no cross pollination. So it's gonna take a few, you know, it's gonna take a year or so for that one. You know, this, this tree here is, I think, I think this is year four. Year three, it, it gave it produced its first rear fruit, right? So it's going to take a couple of years for that one, and it's the right kind of variety. I think that's a Liberty apple, um, so that one will pollinate this sweet 16. Um, so, but anyway, the tree is healthy, clearly healthy, happy tree. So even though we 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 moved this thing in the most violent, rough way you could possibly imagine last fall and it's doing good. But look how healthy it looks. It looks great, right? Same with all these blueberry bushes. I moved these all last fall and look, I'm getting blueberries. Not a bumper crop this year and some bushes have more than others like these ones here. They're pretty sparse but they still have them, right? I definitely got enough for maybe a couple of pies. Um, but next year this will be gangbusters. This whole row of blueberries, right? It'll be gangbusters next year. So I'm so glad I reorganized the garden and made this sort of fruit, fruit grove at the end, right? It's doing great. Anyway, that's where we are, uh, beginning of July, 2023. We have the makings of what looks like a fantastic garden this year. All I gotta do is uh, do a really good, spend the rest of this week, really. I gotta put in a hard week every morning getting everything mulched and everything weeded and everything under control and dealing with everything that doesn't look right like those couple beds that have just failed and are full of weeds I gotta deal with all that but a month from now we're gonna have a lot a lot of stuff coming out of this garden and it's gonna look great it's already looking great but it's gonna look even better so I hope you found that interesting if you did please like share subscribe and until next time get out there get at it have fun in your garden thanks for watching Hey, if you want to help support everything I'm doing here, go to Vessies.com to buy whatever you need for your garden this year. And use my coupon code GAVS23 to get free shipping as long as there's a pack of seeds in the order and there's no oversized items in the order. Check out the description box of this video for details. You can buy everything you need from Vessies. They have seeds, fruit bushes and trees, soil amendments, pest solutions, tools, clothing and lots of other stuff too. So yeah, if you want to help support everything I'm doing here and they sell something you need, buy it from them using my coupon code and happy gardening.